All right, so I've been messing with these cargo doors for a while. But I think I got them to where I can live with it. And that's why I said it. it's about decision making because more time is going to mean more money. And at some point, you got to call it if you're on a budget. And that's the thing I talk about about budgets. People, they start out wrong. They start doing stuff that they don't really have the money to do. So if you want to get it really, really perfect, okay, you're going to have to spend a lot more time than what I did. But it's acceptable to me. So the doors are open. Let's see how it's shut. I haven't got the strike plates yet. Let me put the camera up for you. All right, just dim at the door. So it's all going to change when you put your rubber in too, just so you know. So it, it's up to you on that. Now, you can put your rubber in if you're doing like a full show thing, trying to make it perfect. Um, you know, like I said, this isn't really the place to learn that. I mean, I can do that, but... You know what? I mean, I'm going to do a totally different method, and my budget's going to be totally different. And, you know, I have a little bit of pin, trouble with the pin line up on the bottom, and that's because the strike plate's not in there. You set that strike plate in the right place, and then that'll work. If you notice the door gap on the bottom is a little bit over, it's like a little bit of an overbite. Um, so, you know, you, you, you got to figure out, <clears throat> sorry about that, you guys got to figure out what you're willing to live with, what you're not willing to live with, and this one has a pretty good heavy overbite on this side. I might be able to pull that out a little bit, because like I said, I think that rocker was a little bit twisted or something. Who knows? But let's say you were trying to make this look, have your door gaps all perfect. The van, when it was new, the door gaps weren't perfect, okay? So you're trying to do something uber, uh, restore, whatever. You know, I'm not into that. I just want to restore it to where it's decent. So right here, you could actually, you could actually, you know, weld a little second piece of sheet metal on right here. And then like a little square piece, weld it, overlay it over that. And you could use your filler to bring, because you can fake that roundness in, because it's round. I'm just saying different options. If you wanted to do something like that, if you were trying to get it really, really perfect. And I'll show you what the issues are. Is it basically, it's basically a parts issue. So, if you look here, what I have to do on these, I got this whole edge pounded down and uh, rolled here. You can see hammer mark along there. That can be filled if you want to. I don't think they did from the factory. If you look at some of them, but I'll probably I'll probably throw a little skim coat of filler or some primer on there and, and knock it down, get it to look decent. Um, but if you look at how much grinding I had to do here to get this part to be deep enough, because what happens is the door closure, and, and this is going to even change when I put the stuff in. It hits here. So this part hits here on this thing. Okay. So you have to grind that out. You gotta grind this thing down. You know, if you look at the original deal up here, it's probably a little different than the one you get from uh, the, the, the store. So I haven't got that piece yet. You see this little piece right here? I call it the strike plate. I don't know what the name of it is, but it's like a strike plate for a house. So, anyway, so that's going to help that line up. And then you kind of move that around to make it so that <clears throat> you kind of tack it in place. And then, you know, make your doors open and close until you get it to where you like it. Where, you know, you can just push it shut and then it works. That's the most important thing to me is the doors work good. And then i got to weld that piece in and hopefully it doesn't change anything. So, I ended up with like a huge, this thing was sticking out about almost a half an inch right here. And I looked at my gap, and it almost looked like it was too low, which it is a little bit. But what I did is uh, to fake that in, is you can decide, okay, am I going to cut this whole thing off and then raise it up an eighth of an inch? 
or am I going to just, you know, bend it straight and live with it? You know, those are all decision-making things that you have on your rust repair. If you want everything to be perfect, it's just going to cost you a lot of time and a lot of money. So you got to figure out what you can live with. If you can't live with it, then, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't buy a bus if it was me, and I couldn't live with stuff like that. You end up with a little bit wider gap there than narrow gap here. So this piece is maybe just a sixteenth low. It moved. It's moved twice since I've welded it in. So that's actually the second time I weld that guy in. I don't know if I got all that on camera. It's a little bit tight right here. The gap. And what I could do to fix that. I'm just trying to show you guys different things to fix things. So that if you have that situation, if you want to try and correct it, you can. So this would also help with the, I could take this guy right here, put it on there like that, and then hammer right here and knock this down. Or if you don't have one of those, you could use a hammer and a chisel right here. You're going to make some dents in there, but you're going to knock that edge down and out a little bit. So I might have to do that, but I'm just showing you guys the different types of things you you got to deal with and it's all about you just play with it it's you know it's like I'm still gonna put metal in there and I don't know if I want to weld it with that um, I don't know you know I'm using my 220 welder so I use a 110 it's kind of very different welder so you know I've tweaked the door I had to this was sprung a little I had to like grab onto the door and pull it really hard, tweak it outward to open up this gap because it was a little too tight. The door was sprung when you shut it. Let's show you real quick. If you shut it like this, you could feel it kind of springing against something. So part of it's because this rusty edge right here is all wobbly. So I knocked that down. And of course that's all going to get cut off anyway. And then I'm going to put a new piece on there. We'll be doing that again in future videos. Um, this whole thing. In fact, I'm going to do this whole side probably and the top of this one. This one, I think this whole side is going too, but the top looks pretty pretty good. You know, I see this something right here, right? I could, okay, am I willing to live with that? Am I not? You know, can I grind that? Maybe put a little metal on there? It's That's decision making. And it's on the inside. I could just grind this up and kind of feather that in. That's probably what I'll do and live with it, you know. So, uh, you know, it, 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 when you're doing your restoration, I'm trying to tell you, you know, there's different levels to what you want to do. And, and if you're going for the, you know, $80,000 budget, then, you know, you might as well just take it to the metal guy and have him do it. You know, I mean, but if you're going for that kind of a bus and you're going to try and DIY, it's going to take you a lot of time. You're going to spend, you know, it could be five, six years, seven years, ten years. Depends on how fast and how good your skills are. I'm just saying, you know, if you have no skills, I would say ten years. And, you know, honestly, ten years of life is a long time. That's a lot of your time of your life. Is it worth it? You know, so, so try and figure that out as you go. And, 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 you know, be real about what your skills are and what you're willing to live with. And, I'm just trying to show you guys, you know, here's what I'm willing to live with. When I get it to the point, you know, I may tweak it a little bit more. I may do a little bit more to it. Again, once I get those strike plates, I put the rubber in, everything's going to change. I might end up putting it all together, putting the rubber in and going, oh, man, and then having to retouch the doors and repaint them. You know, I can do that. You guys can't. So, you know, maybe you can't. Maybe you're just going to try and paint it and, you know, you'll watch my spot painting, blending stuff and, You'll be like, hey, I'll just do that. I'll learn how to spot paint. And that's how we did, you know, I don't know. You know, some guys, well, oh, I never do that on my show card. Well, I don't care. You're in a, you're, you got unlimited budgets, all right? You know, some of these guys have, there's no budget. It, it's come in and get the car done and it's 85 an hour or 90 bucks an hour or whatever, 65 an hour for as long as many hours as it takes. And all of a sudden you go, you get all alone. You know, you get a loan to do it because you don't have, you know, 50 grand and you get out a loan and all of a sudden you find out you've already got the loan for 50,000. Well, I need another 10. Hmm. Get the credit cards out. And 
So the question is, do you really want to live that way? Or maybe you just have stacks of, you know, money sitting there. You know, it's it's all up to you. And that's what I'm trying to say is, you know, and, and that's what I talk about building a car and a budget. Those videos that I have on that subject, if you look those up, um, you're, you got to be real about what you, you could want. Everybody wants this, right? All right. But you can afford this. So I'm willing to live with this. And so that's the whole thing is, is decision making is the biggest mistake. I mean, it's the biggest mistake most guys make building a car. So, um, you know, I'm going to probably I'll play with these a little bit more. I, I, I probably will, but I'll, I'll do it off camera because it just it takes too much for me to set up a camera, then think and then start. And then work on something that I forget what I was going to do. And I go back and set, move the camera. It's just it's impossible for me to do a video on all the little things that I've done. But I'm trying to tell you guys the different things that I've done to try and correct some of the things. In fact, I did have to raise that corner. I put a jack with a block of wood underneath the edge. Pushed it back up a little bit just to get that to work. I knew I was going to have to do that stuff. And I, and I know it's easier for me to push it up than push it down. So... That's why I made it a bent when you saw the metal bent in the other video. I bent it down a little bit too low on purpose so that I could push it back up. So that's the stuff that you know from experience that, that I've learned from doing not just this. I mean I've done all different kinds of cars, you know, over the years. I, I worked in a body shop, but I was not the body man. I was a painter and I I did so many wreck repairs, you know, years ago at my house, you know, before I live in where I'm at now. I won't do them now. If somebody came up to me and says, hey, will you fix my car? I'd be like, no, no, no thanks. Not into that, you know. But all my neighbors at my other house, got to get in a wreck and they come over, you know, and I'd fix them up or whatever. So it was always like that, you know. But uh, over the years, it was a lot of things, you know. And I've done, it's just, so you, when you know how to paint, you always learn how to do the other stuff too because to get to the painting stage, you know, you have to do body work, right? So, anyway, well, that's it for this portion. We'll move on. All right, well, um, kind of had a little bit of a pickle here. I got my welders down, and uh, I'm waiting for the panel adhesive to get here for the other set of floors. So, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and set this panel up in place and let you guys check it out. Um, and then, you know, uh, I'll put it on fast motion here for a little bit, and I'll just... Uh, uh, I've already got this ground down. I've got to grind down that piece there to weld it. But I do have to make those two patches first and uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to do them. I think, I'm not sure if I'm going to butt weld pieces in because I've only got the other welder. And I'm not sure, you know, it's got uh, 0.030 and it's kind of a big wire for that. But I could probably do it. It's just not going to be very pretty. But, um, I'm going to do, and I like to make my butt welds a little tighter than the other stuff I do. But I'm going to uh, go ahead and set this panel on first, and then get my holes ready where I want them. And then I'll start shaping the metal for those holes and making it for those smaller holes, because it doesn't cover the whole thing. All right, so let's take a look at where uh, you kind of end up with these um, panels. This is where I always end up. I, I don't know. Maybe other people have different luck with them. But they always don't quite have the same contour as the original. Um, these are clock or home. And this one, you know, always I end up lining up this side. And then I usually cut the other side short because a lot of times... I have some good metal here in the front, but on this one, of course, I didn't, and I have the dog legs out, so I really want this part to line up, okay, the seam here. So, it, it, they always come out a little bit short when I've always checked them, yeah, I don't, or maybe other people have different luck with them, or, or I, and I notch out sometimes what I need. So, if you look here, how I did this, is I, I cut this metal at an angle, and set this one up on, you know, against it so it's butt welded, or it's going to get butt welded right here, and then 
grind it down smooth because we need a smooth edge here. And then if you kind of see here, what I did is I, you know, I made it so that it goes out like this. So I don't have, so this will be a little bit overlapped right here and I can knock that easily, knock that down. I can, you know, weld that little edge and then knock that a little bit low and use filler to fill it, finish it out. And then this part I'll uh, put up tight. But if you see, it's always a little bit sprung when you're trying to do these. So sometimes they come out, you know, you can get a little bit of warpage going on when you start welding that. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is at this point, I'm looking here and I'm trying to figure out, you know, again, there's always decision making when you're doing this stuff. I think what I'll do is I'll clean up this a little bit, get it straight across. So it'll be easier to make a piece for that. Then I'll make, you know, kind of straighten these up a little bit as best I can. With this rocker off, I'll just take it back off real quick because I'm not going to just screw it right back on. And then I will make this piece and attempt to, I'm going to overlap well this to there. This pedal is a little thinner, I think, but I'm not sure. But um, it works fine. It, it, it's the only thing available that I know of, and they're very cheap. So uh, what I usually do is I'll overlap weld this. So um, what I'll do is I'll make, I'm going to make this piece here and just kind of set it so I can just drop it in place. And I can do that before or after I weld this one in. So um, what, because I'll just kind of put it in place and then uh, tack it and then weld it in. But um, what I want to do is after that, after I make that piece, I'll go ahead and put some screws in here, along here, and then that'll hold it in place so that when I weld it, it won't warp as easily. Because I've always found these always end up warping. I've had one that I started in the middle and I kind of worked my way each direction, which I usually do. Um, and by the time I got to the, you know, next seam or whatever, it starts to kink and get, I mean, it can get really ugly. So I'm going to screw this one in place really good. And, but I'm going to go ahead and first, I'm going to go ahead and, um, take these screws back out. Then I'm going to put, um, some, uh, panel adhesive on this. Since I'm going to use panel adhesive, I do have some to do this. So I figured I might as well use it up what I have and then uh, I'll put this piece back on and then I'll figure out I'll, I'll, and I'll cut this out I may do that off, off camera but I'm not sure um, and then I'll get this all ready and then make a piece for that and then I'll bring you guys back in at some point but I'm gonna go ahead and do the panel adhesive now I may do it all in fast motion or something I don't know Well, I wasn't certain about how this would come out off camera, so I thought, well, uh, you know, I just want to try one because of the frustration of using the 110 powered welder. Uh, you know, it, 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 they are totally, it's like not even the same as welding with a 220 at all. So uh, I think I got it welded good enough. I beat on this a bit, so to make sure that it's uh, still on there, it looked a little bit cold going on but it's weird you turn I mean the heat's all the way up and I'm welding sheet metal it should be burning through like crazy then I turn the wire up and I realize that that affects the heat so <laughs> how does that work I don't know my other welder is not like that at all so but anyway I mean I got it to stick I think so anyway I mean it's not structural it's more cosmetic than anything else but I'll try to do that one Maybe we'll do that one on camera and see what happens. I don't know. It's exciting.
actually turned out better than I thought it would. That's pretty smooth, actually. It's because I'm. If I was using my other water, I would have really dialed it in. And I got clean metal, so it's. You know, a lot of the other stuff, I've got the heat turned up really high to make sure I'm penetrating, especially on button welds. You know, you, you want to make sure it goes all the way through. You can sit there and drill and clean it and all that stuff, but, you know, if you turn the heat up on my other welder, that seems to do the trick. But, uh, I'm hoping this sucker doesn't come loose. Let me look at the other side. Yeah, they both look pretty well penetrated, so I'm going to say they're probably okay. You see those welds coming through the other side pretty prominently. I'd say the right side of this one's a little... Hmm, it'll work. But uh, anyway, that's your penetration. Always look for that. It's a, it's a butt welded piece. So I can all right, so let's uh, give this a try with some uh, panel adhesive. And uh, we'll put this thing on real quick. That's what's it ready to go. Got the panel adhesive here. Acid brush. Do this edge real quick because it's downhill. Most expensive caulking gun in the world. Now they're, I don't know, they're like fifty bucks. It's not going to put it where the holes are going to be because I'm going to weld those areas, remember. Coat both surfaces. pause you guys out for a second and I'll bring you guys back in and we'll take a look at it in just a second here so you don't have to watch this boring brushing stuff right as soon as I get this little section done it's like brushing tar really thick yeah I'll bring you guys back in a second all right, so let's put it on. Kind of got it ready. Kind of, kind of. Let's see. Put the grounding clamp there. That's in the way. Wrong way. This one Yeah. Kind of my tools in the way. I want to get this done before uh, so it can sit overnight. 
kind of at the end of the day here, so didn't really get time to clean up everything. Fight around with that welder for a while. I think I got it figured out though. Actually got that to look pretty good. Well, maybe I can actually weld this thing. Wouldn't that be cool? Actually weld it in place. Okay. Bye, right, friends. have too many clamps with this stuff. It likes to be clamped. Okay, so looks like I got plenty of clamps on there. Let's go ahead and put some screws in here, shall we? I think I'll put start in the middle and then work my way out to kind of keep the keep it from uh, giving me a problem. Just gotta find my screws. I'll put you guys on hold for a second while I'm looking for them. Tech screws. Okay, let's start in the middle. Hope this works. It's gonna be a little tricky. Rocker panels are. this area. So I'll pull in here too, let's see. You guys, up a little closer, you can check it out. All right, we'll see here where we're at. So you guys can see that, okay? Hey, how's that? You can see a little better. How about right there? It's a little bit out of my way. Can see this little gap right here so I'm gonna have to push those in as I weld as well so that's the issue you run into on this panel so but having the sheet metal screws in the in there kind of helps To not have, because if you start just pushing it in, it'll start walking on you. And then you'll have a problem. That one's going to have to be pushed in a little bit. Let's take a look down here. Let's put you guys over here a little bit. To the end of the run there. Get in on the action, right? 
Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's going the wrong way. That'd be a bummer. Still this corner off. I'll have to re-bend that and put another piece of metal there or whatever. That thing's pretty far off. Let's go back down this way. See how this turns out. Right there. Oh, I think that's going to be a good shot for you. Kind of. You got one screw, you're going to be kind of in the edge here. Uh, you see this one just wants to. Put a ton of screws in it. I always weld up the holes. It's easy. Well, the 110 welder, it's a little more difficult, I guess. I don't know. That one's going to be a tough one. Probably what I'll have to do is, after the screws are in, I'll probably have to push it in here and then weld, uh, if you can even see that. Uh, yeah, I think you can. I'll push it in and then, and then weld between the screws. So... It's a little loose there too. Same thing. But at least it'll be a lot more in place than if I don't use them. I've done it before without it, and like I said, I had a lot of a lot of fixing to do. I had to I think I had to cut it back off. It happens. Everybody makes mistakes. It's all about it's like playing golf, you know. The guy who comes out of the 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 rough the best. So, you got to get good at coming out of the rough. That's the key thing. Looking at something, figuring out. How to make it right. Even when it isn't. Alright. So. Well. this all welded here then I'll tap this down and I'll kind of weld against this edge a little bit and then I'll grind this down a little bit more so it's a little bit more flush grind it down so it's nice it'll transition being a round corner it helps a lot to hide stuff so you can even if you had to you can even put filler on the actual um, dog leg and then scribe it with your We'll, I'll show some of the filling stuff later when I get to it. I'm just going to do the metal work now. And then filler is easy. I mean, it, well, it's not easy. It's, it's actually, you got to get good with everything. You can't just be good at, you know, metal work and not be good with filler. I'm going to look right. It's all part of it. Okay, so, I don't know. Should I weld some of this? What do you guys think? Trying to figure, I should weld this now. Maybe I could. I guess I could finish this up and then uh, get it ready to upload. Sounds good to me. All right, I'll put you guys back here on another speed. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.
sound right, boys. Sound right, boy. All right, so I'll grind these down and see how they look. Uh, it's always hard to, with these little 110 welders, but it seems like it's penetrating enough. Um, I'm gonna look on the other side. I can look there. Yeah, it looks like on most of them, there's a pretty good hot spot on the other side so that indicates penetration. So, that's a video that. Here you go. It looks like it's pretty well penetrated. When I grind them off, that's when I can really tell. Hit them with a hammer a little bit. Always double check them. If you're using a 110 welder especially. You know, I'm just getting schooled on these 110 welders. I've never used one. so. Anyway, uh, my, my 220 will be fixed soon. Hopefully. But you do see how close those are together. A lot of welds. I would just... It's almost one continuous weld across. Um, even though we are overlap welding. I'm going to tap that down low. A little bit low and then fill over it and it'll look the same as if you butt welded it it's just less time and aggravation so just saves me I, I just don't have the patience you know I did these little butt welding spots here and you know that's about as much as I'll usually do I don't like to something like this it doesn't make any difference at all just it's all you know bragging rights or whatever anyway so anyway uh, uh I, I'll I don't know if I'll get this in the same video hopefully I do um We'll see what happens tomorrow. Maybe I can grind this off. I do not want to do it tonight because it's dark. And see, neighbors might not like it. So uh, even though it's inside the garage, uh, I still won't do it. Take a look at where we ended up here. Um, just so you know, you can, uh, if you have those things on the pillars, you know, those the little end pieces, you can get a little bit better shape out of this. But these things come a little bit off the roundness so uh, if you notice when I put it on it was sprung it stuck out you know about that far and I just sheet metal screwed it in you know you if you want to play with it you could take dolly hammer and and smooth that out or you can buy the the Gerson green ones and they fit better uh, a lot of guys buy those they are more expensive again so um, I've done them this way and just left them like this okay but um, and it looks, it ends up looking okay because it's a round area. So there is 
about from this end to the middle to the out, there's probably about an eighth of an inch low in the middle. And it's because what happens is when you, when you have this corner fits the roundness of that corner, right? Right here. But when you get into the middle, because it, it doesn't have any support behind it, it starts to kind of flatten out and then it goes back to the, to the shape here. And it's like I said, the panel's off and it doesn't have those things. So I run them that way. I'm fine with it myself. You know, you can decide what you want to do on yours. Um, and you could, you know, get those things for the supports. It might come out a little bit better, might not. Um, but you might have to get the green ones in order to get everything to be really perfect. But uh, this is fine for me. Maybe it's going to be fine for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do some hammer work here. This needs to be knocked down. So if you look here, you can almost see it stands out a little bit all the way along. So uh, part of that's because it's sprung. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tool, which I have this. These are expensive to buy. If you don't have it, maybe you can live with what it, what it looks like now. And I almost want to just leave it that way so you can see that it doesn't look that bad. I mean, my other buses, if you look at my red bus, both of those are done uh, without hammering this straight. But um, I just figured I'd do it on this one just for the fun of it. But um, I could get that out a bit more. I don't know how perfect it's going to be. It's probably not going to be quite as nice as if you, you know, had all the proper stuff. But it, it's acceptable. You know, it's just a matter of whether, you know, what you're willing to live with and what you aren't. And, and if you want it better, you can do it better. You can buy the more expensive parts. You know, and, you know, you get what you pay for. And that's just the way it is. I mean, it's already expensive. But uh, when you add to that, you know, another quite a bit more money for more parts and more time, you know, it starts to add up. You know, and all of a sudden at the end of the job, you know, in the in the bus, you're, you're in it for like, you know, another year or two years. So it, you got to know that in advance. Decide what you're going to do and be real about it. Because some people, what happens is they get... They take off too much, you know, they, they bite off more than they can chew. And what happens is you, you think, oh, wow, I, I don't mind spending the extra week. And all of a sudden you stack it up and you're out of a year just to get the little bit of extra stuff that maybe you don't really care that much about. All right, so we're gonna go with the just go with what we got here. Um, it should it should be fine. I'm not worried about whatever we're looking at now. Uh, it looks pretty good, and I'll just do a little bit, maybe just a little bit more stuff. Uh, of course, that'll be off camera. I'm just gonna show you, just trying to show you guys that you know this doesn't always just go. These things don't go just right on, and you they're. You know, they're subject to going on, and it's all in what you can live with. As I said, if you don't can't live with that, then, you know, honestly, at that point, I would say probably don't buy a Volkswagen bus. <laughs> you know, go with something else. But if you really want one of these, there's, or you just have a ton of money, you know, that's that's one of the two. Then uh, you're going to have to either deal with some flaws or you're going to have to deal with some uh lots of money going out of your pocket you'd be buying the green metal and you know i think those ones fit better or you can get the you can get the, uh the ones from i think the ones from uh europe actually fit better than these but again like i said they're a lot more expensive i did lose my panel adhesive in the middle that's all right i'll just drill and spot weld it again i'll drill and spot weld the whole thing and uh it's just not that hard to do doesn't take that long and you can you can with my welder i can go right through the uh 
stuff with this thing uh i don't think i can i'll try it but i don't think i can it doesn't that's kind of a cold weld compared to mine it's very hot so anyway i'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe uh, make sure you make those comments and like to see what you guys have to say